let me begin by asking you a question. Is Neymar a failure? That may sound very harsh, but I want you to tell me down below in the comments and give me your reasons why if you think that he is a failure. Neymar is quite an enigma in the world of football. By far the most entertaining players in the last decade, but by far the most polarizing. Is Neymar's greatest problem the fact that he was born in the wrong era? Did Neymar's transfer to PSG ruin his legacy? Has injuries halted his development? People questioned Neymar's attitude and his desire to improve and focus on football. Do people have a point when speaking about this topic? All the way back in 2010, at the age of 17, Neymar was already lauded by the main Brazilian press to be the next Pele, the greatest Brazilian player of all time, and would drag Brazil back to the glory years of 2002. Brazil is a footballing nation that is obsessed about one thing and one thing only, and that is the World Cup. Neymar will be the one to bring success and pride back to the Brazilian people. Neymar and Pele, both Brazilian stars that started a career at Santos that both rose from poverty. The comparisons was made immediately. He was treated as a god before even knowing what he's capable of before the age of 18. What damage does that cause to a young player? The expectation of an entire planet, never mind an entire nation, what does that do to you? For many people, especially at a young age, Neymar could be the reason why he started watching football. The entertainment that he brought on the pitch, similar to Ronaldinho, he electrified the scene and showed that football can truly be entertaining. However, Neymar seemed to be born in the wrong era yet again. Football has changed so fast. He didn't have the likes of social media on his back on a day-to-day -day basis and that you can be a bit more raw. You can be imperfect. Just this week in The Athletic, it's come out that Neymar wants to end his career at PS. SG. And at the age of 31, he's got no Ballon d'Ors, no World Cups, and one Champions League. Despite all the goals, the assists, the memories of him before in the past, he's still talked about as a cautionary tale than a superstar. Whose fault is this? Is this the media? Or is this himself? In today's video, I'm going to go into why I believe Neymar could have been the greatest player ever. And what's happened since then? It seemed obvious back in 2014 that when he joined Barcelona that he was going to be the obvious man to replace the great man that is Leo Messi and replace him and be the new figurehead and spearhead Barcelona into the new modern era. The Ballon d'Ors, the Champions Leagues, the World Cups, the accolades will be ready and waiting for him. We're going to go to Neymar in this video. At this stage, I may even do a Neymar iceberg video. So if you'd want that, then let me know down below in the comments. Tell me your thoughts on Neymar. If you do enjoy, then please do subscribe and also smash the like button if you're new and let's get straight into it if you play FIFA 23 and want to improve your team but not go for the effort of actually playing the game then make sure to go down below in top of the description to use them and buy and make sure at checkout to use code visa I asked you guys on social media to give me your thoughts on Neymar and exactly what I expected happened I got many different types of answers. Let's break down to the very basics. When people say that Neymar has underachieved, what do they mean? And they mean simply be the best player in the world. Be above Messi or Ronaldo. At the Neymar in the last two, three years, this should be his moment to get those Ballon d'Ors when Messi is aging and Neymar can be at the peak of his powers. Neymar has been compared to people his entire life. If it's from Pele, if it's from Ronaldinho, if it's from Messi, he's always been the second, the comparison to someone else that is seen as the better of him. And that has continued to follow him throughout his entire career. Even when he went to PSG to be the main man, that lasted for about a season or two because a new man came to the scene. His name is Kylian Mbappe. Neymar left Barcelona to become the superstar. Neymar left Barcelona with the hope of getting out of Messi's shadow. The tactics, the style, his entire play completely directed and evolved around Messi. Neymar can never be the main man with Messi being in the team. Unai Emery, when he was manager of PSG, spoke about the fact that his main job was to keep Neymar happy at any means necessary. If Neymar wasn't happy, then he simply had to go. And that is what happened. His contract is astonishing. Potentially over 700,000 euros a week at his contract at PSG. The amount of incredible clauses in his contract that we can go on for an entire video in itself. He had complete freedom 
to be whatever he wanted to be at PSG. So how unfortunate is it that not only two years later, Mbappe comes to the scene and challenges him on being the main man at PSG and actually overtaking him in the ranks. But to make it even worse, Lionel Messi then joined PSG too, and then he became the third in the group of Mbappe and Messi. Messi will always be Lionel Messi, and Mbappe is the shinier, new, younger product, which PSG has much more interest in keeping and pleasing. And Neymar, with age, he's not got too many years left, and his value will be diminishing, unlike Mbappe. But is this unfair? On Neymar, people comparing him to unbelievable expectations that he never asked for. Neymar, in his career, 708 games, 436 goals, is the joint top goal scorer in Brazilian football history, 77 joint with the great Pele. He's Brazil's all-time top goal scorer in the Champions League. Statistically, he's a fantastic player. In terms of what he does on the pitch, I mean, you just gotta watch him to see how good he is. But then you look at the numbers closely and you realize one common trend. The most amount of games that he's played for PSG in Ligue 1 since 2018 is 22 league games and it's a 38 game year. So what's happening here? Well, that is my friend, a very simple thing called injuries. Over the course of five years at PSG, Neymar has missed 102 games to injury. This comes from multiple metatarsal fractures, groin injuries, and ankle injuries. When you look at fouled player in the world by quite, quite a mile. Since 2016, Neymar has been fouled 1,040 times, with only second being Messi with 839, and Jack Grealish with 747. That is almost 300 times more he's been fouled than the third most fouled player in the last six years. In the World Cup, since 2014, Neymar has been fouled 53 times. Has Neymar's talent and ability simply been beaten out of him? Can this be the fault of Neymar? Surely not, you can't blame him for injuries. Due to his electric and flair style of play, it may annoy quite a lot of players who may only find the only way to stop him is by kicking him down. Of course, many players with this talent has faced the same problems. Messi, of course, more than anyone else. So how come it seems to affect Neymar so much more? Is there something happening at PSG? As his times over at Barcelona, he completed pretty much more seasons. In his three years in Barcelona, he completed in the league 30, 34, and 33 games in the league. And in the last couple of years in Ligue 1, he's completed 20, 22, 18, and also 15. But when you look at the goals and assists in those small amount of games, it is ridiculous. In Ligue 1 this year, he's played 20 games in the league, scored 13, and assisted 11, which is even more frustrating because you know how good this guy is. You know what he is capable of if he had consistency, if he had no injuries, if he had the players around him to also supply him the goods, and he's got that. Is it just the injuries? Is it ego? Is it outside influence? When people talk about Neymar, people always go back to him going to PSG being the biggest mistake in his career. Speaking along the lines of, if he stayed at Barcelona, he would be the best player in the world. He went to PSG for his ego and for money, people say. Speaking that at PSG, it never was about the football and was always about the glamour, the fashion. Now we could do a separate video on PSG alone as a football unpredictability or the predictable unpredictability that he brings because it's so consistent consistent how good he is. Left foot, right foot, long shot, chip, flare passes, free kicks, curlers, whatever you can name. He's got everything that you need and he also has that edge to him too. His ability to take on one man and two man and go back in and take that same play on again and then go on and take a third and a fourth and then score a goal or set up an assist. It is astonishing how consistent he is. I firmly believe that Neymar has the ability to be up there with Messi and with Ronaldo. He's got the ability, he's got the talent. The only problem is the consistency and that is just painful for me because we all know what he can be. And he is a beautiful throwback to what football used to be two, three decades ago. When you think of the best dribblers 
on the ball in history. You think of Ronaldinho, you think of Diego Maradona, Zidane Zidane, R9 Ronaldo, Johan Cruyff, these architects of the footballing game, they are creators, they create their own skills, they don't follow the trends, they are the trends, they are the people that people want to try to emulate and do the same things they do because they know that they can't do what they do. He can create his own style of play, he can create his own pass routines or dribbling routines, skill moves. There's not too many people like that anymore of the new era of player. With football nowadays, especially at the top level, it's a lot more um, engineered. When you think of modern football, you think of Man City that it kind of sucks out that individual brilliance to make sure that you are a cog in a system which makes sure that everyone in that system knows their job and knows their role. When you're in this area of the pitch, you're meant to do this. And when you're in this area of the pitch, you're meant to do that. And you aren't really meant to go out of that system. Of course, not on the same level, but a, a flair player like a Jack Grealish, for example, went to Man City. And he's quite clearly lost that individual brilliance and that unpredictable flair that he used to have because he's part Part of a system and elite football is going more and more in that way year by year that is what neymar represents to me the last of a dying breed of truly incredible talents that can get you on your feet entertainers and that's what football is all about but not only can he do that with the entertainment side of it but he's got the clinical edge he's got the shooting he's got the finishing he's got the passing he's got the passing range he's got everything that you need to be the top of the very game. When I see people dumb down his brilliance because of the fact that he has got a reputation to be diver, I guess you can say, he has got this diver phrase surrounding him. And for when you speak to many people that may not like Neymar, this is always the first thing that they go to, saying he's a diver, he's unprofessional, he's dislikable. Now, when researching this, one interesting piece of information that I found is that there's times that Neymar sometimes does dive at times to potentially avoid him catching more injuries. When he sees a potential foul on the horizon, he just jumps out of the way to prevent a collision, which may end up leading to another injury. When you are a player like Neymar, who is so reliant on taking on players and putting yourself in risky situations to be there to get hit, to get tackled, I get it to an extent. Of course though, the rolling and the, the theatrics of it all potentially doesn't do many favors. One thing that also does not do many favors is his let's say questionable relationship with his family members i don't really want to speak about this because you know it's not my place you know fng niran that's his place to talk about niran and um, his family members um so i'm not gonna add too much to it other than just showing the the clips that have gone around i wouldn't do that but it's not my it's not my family right maybe it's a cultural difference I think. And that is the most frustrating thing. What he does outside of football, what he does in his own personal life, clearly creates a lot of noise because no matter what Neymar does, he will forever be in the headlines, no matter what. So the main critiques of Neymar that's held him back potentially is his injury record, his attitude or diving nature. And the third one is potentially his career choices. And that is the main one going from Barcelona to Paris Saint-Germain. The main concern is, is that for a large chunk of people, Neymar can score 40 goals and 40 assists in Ligue 1, and people still wouldn't rate it that highly because it's in Ligue 1, because it's the French League. People do not rate the level in Ligue 1 whatsoever. It is the same reason why people don't rate Mbappe the level that he should be, because they are waiting to see him in La Liga, or waiting to see him in the Premier League to see what he can do. Even though we've seen him play in the Champions League in the World Cup, we know how good he is. People still want to wait because the league plays a big factor and the fact that he went to PSG it's for one reason only and that is to win the Champions League to give PSG their first ever UCL yes money is a massive part of it and he was guaranteed to not only be a star but to basically do whatever he wants at the club he has got free reign to be whatever he wants to be at PSG because they're never going to not play him 
obviously, because, well, he's, he's amazing. But when it comes to managers, the manager's job is to keep Neymar happy. Unai Emery has confirmed it when he was at PSG that his job was to keep Neymar happy. And if he doesn't keep him happy, then he loses his job. And that is the number one main problem at PSG. So him going to PSG to get out of the shadow of Messi to turn PSG into a European giant. He's been there for five years now. And now they've been knocked out yet again in the Champions League in the round of 16. Is it a failure? Has he failed at PSG? He's 31 now, he's not got many more years left, and as I said earlier, he's now spoke out saying that he is wanting to end his career at PSG. He's got no plans of leaving. In my opinion, it's such a waste, and PSG, of course, they've got the team capable to do it, but I don't think they've got the right atmosphere. When I think of PSG, I think of individuality. I think of the players and not the team. The team coming together to play in one system, to beat together and that have that work ethic. PSG have too many luxury players and I think when it comes to the big games, I think it does show. I mean, even the fact that PSG have not even won league and guaranteed each time each year is in itself a mockery. The fact that Lille can go on and win league and is stupid compared to the riches that PSG have, especially now with Mbappe and Messi. As a footballer, has Neymar failed? In my opinion, no, but when you can speak about has he failed with what he was meant to do at PSG, you can definitely give a good reason of yes, he has failed at PSG. He's not played that many games due to injury reasons that may be not his own fault, and they've not won a UCL, and they made it to a final in, of course, 2020, and they didn't succeed. They lost to Bayern Munich. That was their chance, and they didn't take it. Now, of course, they can get that chance again in another year's time, but how long would that take? And then there's a big one that I've not spoke of really, but that is Brazil. The national team, he's a god over there. Football is a religion in Brazil and that plays a factor also. And this is where I feel some great sympathy for him because in 2014, in Brazil for the World Cup, he got injured against Colombia and of course, as everyone happened, but the team that he had was just nowhere near on the same level. They were playing the likes of Fred, right? He was trying to deal with these guys that were nowhere near good enough to even attempt to win a World Cup. And he got cheated out of that even slim chance. I don't think with Neymar starting, they would have beat Germany in that semi-final. And then the 2018 World Cup Brazil getting knocked out by Belgium in the quarterfinals, which was a massive dint to them because they had a much better team back then. But it still wasn't perfect. He still played a few interesting players. Fania as a right back, Miranda, Paulinho, Willian, it still wasn't the complete package at the time. And then came 2022. This looked like their moment. Brazil had incredible form, the best form on the planet other than Argentina. And it was, seemed like it was so obvious that the final would be Argentina versus Brazil. Messi v Neymar, the narratives were already created months before in advance. It, it, it all looked so obvious. And then they lost to Croatia. And this just this hurt because there were no excuse there was no excuse for this defeat there was some injury problems of course Neymar had an ankle injury Croatia of course a fantastic technical side and you know a physical side as well but there's there's no excuse when Neymar scored in that game against Croatia the beautiful link up play to score and it felt like this is his time, okay? He's not got many more World Cups left, maybe one more in him. In the peak of his years, they've been knocked out in two quarterfinals of two teams that you would think they should be beating. Is this the fault of Neymar? Is it the fault of the manager? Is it the fault of the team? Is the team just not strong enough at a time period? I would say that, I think we would all say that in 2022, they had the team capable of definitely winning the World Cup. Give me your thoughts down below in the comments. Tell me how do you look back on Neymar? What, how do you see his career? Do you think that he has reached his potential? Do you think that he has still got a ceiling higher that he can still go on to? Usually with a player that's got quite a, a discouraging injury record, usually when they hit the later ends of their career, that they seem to slow down and maybe lose that bit of an edge. The one thing that Messi always did, despite his age, is that he always kept himself fit. And for whatever reason, he always seemed to get out of being injured for a large, large chunk of his career. But with Neymar, I think that that could seriously impact him. I think in two, three years time, it could be all but over at him at the highest level. I like to imagine a world where Neymar stayed at Barcelona and he was able to be the superstar that we all know he could be at Barcelona. And just get more respect, I think, because that's one thing that he doesn't get enough, I feel. So, yeah, I'm 
by far the name of fan club I think you could you could you could realize and I just find it a great shame because he deserves better and he hasn't got that from some reasons his own and some reasons is out of his control such as injuries and it's just a shame man so yeah tell me your thoughts down below in the comments should Neymar right now be up there as a Ballon d'Or winner should he be already a Ballon d'Or winner should he have won more in his career tell me down below and I'll see you guys next time